عبد الله بن الزبعرة لعبت هاشم بالملك فلا وحي أتى ولا كتاب نزل The meaning of the poetry means that Hashem, the tribe of Hashem, they just played a trick. La wahi, no wahi came and no book was revealed. Until here, until this level, a dhulam and the decrease in iman until this level gets to you? Subhanallah. Huh? So sometimes this iman decreases until it dips the one in Jahannam. Waliyadu billah. Because the decrease of Iman is a sickness, disease, marad. Al-Quran mentions it as marad, right? Marad means disease. What happens when someone's heart is diseased? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Fi qulubihim maradun. Huh? Fazadahum Allahum marada. Once that disease happens, the disease will increase until what iyadu ala dhikur jahannam. Right. The other reason for then not having a haya tayyibah or a life that is tayyibah and good is then what? Al-amal al-salih. Man amila salihan min dhakarana wuntha wa huwa mu'min. So we talk about mu'min. Let's talk about al-amal al-salih. What can it be? Al-amal al-salih. Al-amal, the deed sometimes is divided individually and collectively. What do I mean by that? Okay. On individual cases, Ask ourselves, every one of ourselves. Do we fulfill Allah's rights that He told us to do? Do we follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Do we abide by the Qur'an or we abandon the Qur'an? We have to ask ourselves these questions. Do you take care of your kids or you leave your kids outside in the streets for the shayateen of ins and jinn? to influence them. Uh, this is a responsibility. This is something that you do. Huh? Does the wife fulfill the rights of her husband? Or she's busy with TV. Does the husband fulfill the right of his wife? Or he's busy with his friends? We have to ask ourselves, where do we stand? Are we really doing istighfar and tawbah every day to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? I want you just this moment right now to remember, for one second, to remember what the things we've done, you've done, and start with saying, Allahumma salli ala in your heart, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, and say in your heart, astaghfirullah wa atubu li repent to Allah now, right now, and then end it with Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. Repent, God, let's go back to Allah. We have to do that in order for us to live this comfortable life, there is no other way but to go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can get this life that we seek. We all want to be happy. How can we be happy? This is the way. Then how can as, then as this is as an individual, you have to check yourself, see where you stand. Then how about as an ummah as well? As an ummah, just like the individuals, this, the individual disobeys Allah, the entire ummah or the majority of the ummah could be disobeying Allah. We have to see this. Let's see. What is the Ummah doing? And sometimes punishment comes to the entire Ummah for the action of its majority. Or a few sometimes even. Look in the battle of Uhud. <coughs> in the battle of Uhud, what happened? And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam appointed 40 people on the mountain. Those who throw arrows. Huh? No matter, he told them specific order. No matter what happens, even if the birds would come to pick you, do not move from your posts until you get a clear order. No matter what happens on the field. People stood very nicely, okay. watching. They're on the mountain. They're watching Muslims fight. First hour or two, Muslims were superior. Kuffar were running back. And the kuffar were leaving all their things behind. All their swords, all their money, all their foods, all their valuables, everything. They're leaving and running. Uh, some people were in the floor. They said, Man, there's some money. Let's, let's get some. Abdullah bin Jubair said, Ya qawm, O oh people. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told you, gave you an advice. Do not, do, do not disobey Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't worry about this. 
Huh? Sometimes dunya blinds people. Sometimes money blinds people. Sometimes gold blinds people. Huh? Subhanallah. Allah reveals the ayah, مِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الدُّنْيَا وَمِنْكُمْ مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْآخِرَةِ Among you people who want the dunya, and among you people who want the akhirah. So these people came back, came down, some of them, and what happened? The army of the kuffar came, returned, made their U-turn all the way, and attacked the Muslims from behind, <coughs> and many of the Muslims were killed. Many, many of the Sahaba, among them Sayyiduna Hamza, Ridwanullah Ta'ala, Asadullah, Wa Asadu Rasulihi. The day of sadness, and Muslimin went back to Medina crying in tears. Huh? And one of the saddest, day for, the saddest days for the Prophet, وسلم, as he watched his own beloved uncle Hamza, Asadullah, pass away or being killed in front of him. Why? Disobedience of a few. We have to ask ourselves as a community or as an ummah, are we disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Are we disobeying Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? So we are, then we are exposed to this punishment. What happened to riba? Riba is spreading under all kinds of names. Uh, under the name of increasing money in your pocket, uh, make new business, Increasing my food in your, in your, in your stomach, prepare, give your children my college, uh, all these things, under all kinds of different names and banners. The riba is increasing in the ummah, where Allah and the Quran says, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ If you do that, huh? you start doing riba, then what happens? Allah says, Quran, then you are warned that Allah and His Prophet declared war on you. Harb, war, literally. Literally. A war. From who? The war. Who's fighting you if you do that? Allah and His Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is this ayah because people until today they do riba. Not only back then. Until today they do riba. And guess who fights them? Allah and His Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This tells you what? That Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is alive. How can he fight you if he doesn't? The ayah says, فَأَذَنُوا بِحَرْبَ مِنَ اللَّهِ Only Allah? لا, وَرَسُولِهِ طيب فَسَاد It's a deviance from huh? from the orders of Allah. Look at the ummah. Is the ummah as a whole deviating from the book of Allah and the sunnah of Rasulullah yes. Has there been a crime where uh, the Ummah has not done. Huh? So we have to look at ourselves as an Ummah, just like the individual must go back to Allah by repentance and by sincerity and not doing the thing back. We as an Ummah must also go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can live this life. Otherwise, it's not looking very good. But, Having stated the problem and diagnosed the problem, we have to realize something. We have a promise. We have a promise. We have a guaranteed promise. Man aman wa amila saliha. Who believes and does well, then those would live the best of lives. This promise continues. So all we have to do is number one, watch our iman and then make sure we do well, we do good. But see, the problem is, not only in us doing good, we as a community must make sure that the ummah as a whole returns back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How do we do that? By increasing the good among people, by calling people for good. That's the whole reason. Why are we the best of ummahs? Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas Why? Only like that? La. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar. So if we do that then, as an ummah, as individuals who are part of this ummah, what will happen then? We will fulfill these two things, iman and amal salih, and then you await the victory from Allah. No doubt about that, absolutely whatsoever. 
it's a promise, it's a promise that Allah promised us and therefore it will be realized. In the worst of times, in the most darkest of moments, and in the lowest of eras, in the, in the sense of torture on the Muslims, where Muslims